Now, based on our discussion till date, we'll try to solve a few numerical problems. Question number one. A sample of clay has a cohesive strength of 80 kPa and an angle of internal friction of 10 degrees. Calculate the shearing strength of the clay at normal stress of 100 kPa. So the data given is C equal to 80 kPa, phi angle of internal friction equal to 10 degrees and the normal stress sigma equal to 100 kPa. And you need to find the shear strength of the soil. So shear strength S equal to C plus sigma tan phi proposed by Mohr Coulomb. And C is already given, sigma is already given and phi is already given. All you have to do is to substitute. 80 plus 100 10 degrees so the answer is 97.6 kilopascals quite simple question next question an unconfined compression test was performed on a stiff clay specimen and it was found that the failure stress is 20 kilopascal estimate the cohesive strength so if you could just recollect we said that the unconfined compression test is a test where you don't have sigma 3 and sigma 3 equal to sigma c equal to 0. So when you draw the more circle it will have its first point at the origin and hence the diameter which will be q1 qu or sigma 1 will be twice the radius and the radius is nothing but cohesion. So in short cohesion is equal to sigma 1 by 2 or ultimate load by 2 and in this particular question it was found that the failure stress is 20 kilopascal which means qu is already given all you have to do is to divide it by 2 and cohesion is 10 kilopascals question number 3 the following results were obtained from a series of cd tests consolidated drain tests on soil and the pore pressure was not measured determine the shear parameters you have three samples given sample 1 sample 2 and sample 3 and sigma c confining stresses are 100 200 and 300 sigma d the deviator stresses are 600 750 and 870 respectively for samples 1 2 and 3 in short you take one sample, apply a sigma c water pressure or sigma 3, 100 kilopascal, let it go through the consolidation stage and later on you apply a deviator stress sigma d of 600 kilopascal at the top. So for us to understand and to arrive at the shear parameters, you need sigma 1 and sigma 3. Sigma 3 is directly equal to sigma c, the confining stress. But to get sigma 1, the major principal stress, you need to add sigma c and sigma d. So for sample number 1, the minor principal stress sigma 3 equal to 100 and the major principal stress sigma 1 equal to 100 plus 600, 700 kilopascal. 700 is sigma 1 and 100 is sigma 3. Likewise, you have for the other two samples as well. For sample number 2, you have 750 plus 200, 950 as a major principal stress and minor principal stress is nothing but sigma c itself. Likewise, for sample 3, 1170 and 300. So, now you have sigma 1 and sigma 3 for three different samples and you can draw the Mohr circle. For us to draw the Mohr circle, you have sigma in the x-axis and tau in the y-axis. So take sample number 1, you have sigma 1 as 700 and sigma 3 as 100. You move 100 to the right side direction and you will get a point here. You move 700 from the origin and you will get another point. So those two points will be representing the two sides of the circle, the Mohr circle that you draw. So you'll get a Mohr circle like this for sample number 1. Likewise, you have two readings, 950 and 200. You have sample number 2 
and the third sample gives you 1170 and 300 as sigma 1 and sigma 3. So you have the third sample and the third Mohr circle like this 300, 1170. So in short, you have three Mohr circles for three samples, and you will have a line, a Mohr Coulomb failure envelope that is tangential to all these three Mohr circles like this. So you can draw a line that is tangential to the three Mohr circles and it will have a cohesive intercept at the y-axis C and a slope of phi which is the angle of internal friction. So graphically you can determine phi and C when you use a chart paper or a graph sheet. So approximately that turns out to be 150 kilopascal as a y-intercept which is cohesion and the slope is 24 degrees approximately. Question number four. The following results were obtained from a series of CU consolidated undrained tests on a normally consolidated clay and the pope water pressure U was determined. Determine the shear parameters for total and effective conditions. Just like the previous example, you have three samples, number 1, 2 and 3 and sigma C is given 250, 500 and 750 kilopascals respectively. The deviator stresses are given 150 to 300 and 455 kilopascals. The extra data given is pore pressure U 120, 250 and 350 kilopascals. So compared to the previous example, the difference is that pore water pressure was determined and you need to find the shear parameters for effective conditions as well in addition to the total condition. So you have sigma C and sigma D and sigma C is directly equal to sigma 3, the minor principal stress and the major principal stress will be the sum of sigma z and sigma d quite similar to the previous example so 250 plus 150 to 402 will be sigma 1 and sigma 3 will be equal to sigma c 250 kilopascal itself likewise for sample 2 and 3 so you have sigma 1 equal to sigma c plus sigma d 402 is a major principal stress Sigma 3, the minor principal stress, is directly equal to sigma C, 250. For same, for this, this pattern will continue for sample 2 and sample 3 as well. The next part, to find the effective shear strength parameters, you are given with the pore pressure U. So, sigma 1 dash and sigma 3 dash will have to be determined. Sigma 1 dash is a major principal stress in the effective condition and Sigma 3 dash is a minor principal stress in the effective condition. All you have to do is to subtract U, the pore pressure, from Sigma 1 and Sigma 3. So Sigma 1 dash will be 402 minus 120. Likewise, Sigma 3 dash will be 250 minus 120. So you have sigma 1 dash 282, sigma 3 dash 130. Likewise, you have for sample 2 and sample 3. Sigma 1 and sigma 3 will help you to arrive at the shear parameters for the total condition and sigma 1 dash and sigma 3 dash will help you to arrive at the shear parameters for effective conditions. Again, to know the values of shear parameters you need to plot the graph sigma in the x-axis and tau in the y-axis. We'll first try to plot for the effective condition. We have sigma 3 dash 130 and sigma 1 dash 282 for sample number 1. Like this you have a more circle with sigma 1 282 and sigma 3 130 under effective condition. So sigma 3 dash and sigma 1 dash 282 and 130. Next, you take the second sample, 550 is sigma 1 dash, 250 is sigma 3 dash, 
so you get a bigger circle to the right side of the already drawn circle for sample number 1. Likewise, you have the third circle for sample number 3. 855 is sigma 1 dash and 400 is sigma 3 dash. So you have a bigger circle compared to the previous two circles and the left hand coordinate will be 400 and the right hand coordinate will be 855. Uh, in short, you have three circles and you can draw a line through the origin tangential to all the three circles because it's CU test and it's normally consolidated clay. So there's a line that goes from the origin passing through the three circles tangential to it and the slope of which will be phi, the angle of internal friction for effective condition. Then you will have to plot and to arrive at the shear parameters for the total condition you have sigma 1 and sigma 3, 402 and 250. I have used a different color code. I have used green here. So you have a green circle with 250 on the left side and 402 on the right side. Sigma 3 and sigma 1, sigma 3 and sigma 1 for sample number 1. Likewise, you have for sample number 2, 500 and 800 you get a bigger circle to the right side and you have 750 and 1205 another bigger circle to the right side with 750 here and 1205 here so when you take a look at the red circles and the green circles you can see that the green circles are the one that corresponds to the total parameters so it has shifted to the right the radius and the diameter may look similar, but the difference is that the sigma 3 for the total condition 250 is greater than sigma 3 dash for the effective case 130, and the difference being 120. So the green circle is shifted to the right side compared to the red circles, and hence the effective stress shear parameters phi dash will have a bigger slope and in this case for total condition when you draw a line like this tangential to all the green circles you'll get the shear angle 14 degrees and for the previous one it was 22 degrees in short the angle of internal friction for effective case is greater than that of a total case.